and position of the pendulum is as shown in the figure that is making an angle 30 degree with the vertical. Determine the velocity and acceleration of the bob in the position shown in the position shown. Okay, beta. So, we will try to calculate the velocity and acceleration of the bob at the position shown. If you do remember in the class beta, in classes we used to discuss the question of the bob at the mean position. This will be the mean position of the bob. At this position, 80 will be 0. But at in this given question, 80 will not be 0. It will be non-zero and will need to be calculated. We, we are going to calculate that also. So, of course, it will enrich us more that we have studied in classes. Okay, And it will, you know, make us revise also the concept. So, my dear students, with the, uh, in the classes, we discuss the bob at the mean position here. But it is not here. It is at this position. Okay, fine. Now, beta, this is a simple pendulum of length 1 meter with a bob of mass say some m is in of course is in simple harmonic motion some and at the instant when the bob is making angle 30 degree with the vertical the tension in the wire is equal to 2.6 times the weight of the bob. Now my dear students what is asked to me the velocity and acceleration of the bob at the mean position is ok fine. My dear students as of now, say suppose m is the mass of this bob. Say suppose m is the mass of this bob. If you do understand, we need to consider this particular bob as a particle of mass m and which is in circular motion in this vertical circle of, met of 1 meter radius and its center is here. My dear students, I guess we have discussed in class also and here I am uh, you know saying it again if you have not attended the class. You can consider this bob in circular motion at this instant in vertical circular motion of a radius 1 meter whose center is here and the position of this particle is here. If you do understand beta it will have two accelerations at this instant. One is radial acceleration and another will be tangential acceleration parallel to the path. It can be in this direction or in this direction. But I will prove it beta, it will be in this direction. Why? I will prove it because the force will be in this direction. In tangential direction, force will be in this direction, not in this direction. So, so that will be beta tangential acceleration. Okay, fine. Now, as of now, beta, let me start considering its FBD, FBD of this bulb at this instant. My dear students, if you do understand, one force will be there in the downward direction that will be mg, mg, mg other than mg beta there will be tension in this direction, tension and tension itself is what beta, uh, tension is what, how much is the tension beta? It is 2.6 times of weight that is 2.6 mg. Other than that beta, there are two directions, one is radial direction and in this direction you, we will have the radial acceleration and another direction is tangential direction, we will have the tangential acceleration in this direction. Okay, fine. Now, if you do understand, let us, let us extend it. Uh, yes, is it looking? Yes. Uh, and if you do understand beta, this angle will be what? this angle will be what better. Uh, this wire is making angle 30 degree with the vertical. So, that is the direction of tension. Tension will be along the wire. So, it will be making angle 30 degree with the vertical. Now, if you do understand, we need to break the forces in two directions. One is in radial acceleration direction and another is in tangential acceleration direction. We need to break the forces in two directions. One is in radial acceleration direction, another is in tangential acceleration. T is already in that direction, but mg is in vertical direction. So, we will break the component of mg, one in this direction of radial acceleration mg cos 30 and another will be in this direction that is mg sin 30. My dear students, first let me see in radial direction, radial direction. In radial direction, of course, radial acceleration is in this direction. That means net force that oh sorry that means beta radial acceleration is in this direction so that means net force will be in this direction 
net force is in this direction radial acceleration. So, net force is in this direction that means T is more than mg cos 30. So, net force in this direction is T minus mg cos 30 will be equal to beta net force will be equal to mass into acceleration that is Newton's second law. Acceleration is in this direction. So, net force has to be in this direction. So, T minus mg cos 30. A student said to me sir why you are not considering mg sin 30 because this is perpendicular to radial acceleration. This force will not have any component in this direction. So, I can consider only T and mg cos 30 and T minus mg cos 30 is net resultant force in the radially inward direction and this force itself is known as centripetal force. This force itself is known as centripetal force and whose magnitude will be equal to mv square by because radial acceleration m is m beta. This radial acceleration you can put v square by r. So, centripetal force is nothing but the resultant of actual forces in the radially inward direction or you may call it in the centripetal direction. Okay. So, my dear student T minus mg cos theta mv square by r and T is given to us na T is given to us T is given to us as 2.6 times of mg. Uh, first of all cancel out m with m and now you can calculate the 2.6 oh better I should take common 2.6 g common cos 30 v square by r radius radius of this circle I guess you can understand radius is 1 meter only ok. So, here beta at first of all we need to calculate Mm. that is v square has come out equal to 17.0102 and from here square root of it velocity has come out 4.1243 meter per second. 4.124 meter uh, 4.1243 meter per second 4.1243. Why I have taken uh, you know uh, you calculated v square you will understand because this will be helpful for us in calculating the <laughs> radial acceleration. First of all beta let me calculate the radial acceleration. Radial acceleration is nothing but v square by r v is 17.01 and r is v square sorry is 17.01 r is 1. So, beta it will be 17.01 meter per second square. What about tangential acceleration beta? For that we need to see in tangential direction ok. For that I need to see in the tangential direction. So, my dear students in will apply Newton's second law in tangential direction. First you need to look at look at this question. In tangential direction mg sin 30 is the only force in the tangential direction. So, that is the resultant force because it is the only force. So, this will be the resultant force. My dear students tension will not have any component in tangential direction. Mg cos 30 is, all, uh, cos 30 is also perpendicular to this direction. Mg sin 30 is the only force. So, that will be the resultant force will be equal to mass into acceleration and in this direction acceleration will be tangential acceleration. You may lose out m with m and acceleration a t is g by 2 which is nothing but beta acceleration g by 2 is nothing but 4.905 ok uh, 80 g by 2 80 here has come out equal to 4.905 meter per second square. My dear students as we all know the radial and tangential acceleration will always be mutually perpendicular. So, the resultant acceleration will be a r square plus a t square. A r is 17.01 square and this one is 4.905 square. Let me do the calculation here 17.01 square plus 4.905 square square root of it will come out equal to 17.703 meter per second square that is magnitude of acceleration at that instant. So, beta acceleration net acceleration and the velocity that is 4.1243 meter per second. So, these are the answers. Mm -hmm.